What do we actually do when we replace someone's knee? What are you doing, Brad? You, I see you in there you, fidgeting around in the OR. What are you, doing, what are you what actually are you doing? doing back there? What is she doing? I never know what she's doing back there. Mom. Mom. All right. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Wayne. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. So patients ask this all the time. Uh -huh. Some people are like, I don't even want to know. They're like, I don't care what you do. I don't no. even want to know. I don't want to know the details. But then we're like, well, what do you actually do like from the yeah. beginning to the end? But some people are. They are interested. Like, yes. what, what do you do? Yes. You'd be that type of patient. What do you yeah, do? Yeah, I probably would like do, to know. Though? Why? What are you like, going to do? Why did you do that? In my body. Why? Why did you do that? I'd want to know. Yes. Okay, all so right. we'll start at the beginning. Right. So I, to explain this to, okay. this is the way I would explain it to medical students and residents or new residents. Or an interested patient. Or interested patient. Yes. Basically, I divide it up into sort of the prep. Okay. You prepare the patient. In the OR, you're preparing the limb or whatever. You're right. So we're not talking about all your pre-op stuff. Yeah, we're not even talking about the anesthetic. This is what do we you're, do. You're in the OR. What do you do? What do you do? Okay. So you prep the patient. Yep. Then there's the approach. Yep. The bone preparation. Yep. The implantation. Yep. Closure. Love it. Okay. So simple. You gotta have closure. It's like a grade eight essay. I right. Like it. It's impressive. Yeah. Uh, Let's start at the beginning. Okay. So the patient's prepped, right? Yep. So in, we prep and drape the patient. We have help with our. Obviously, there's a team, right? It's not just us alone. Not we have assistants. We have nurses. Yep. Um, and so the the le the limb is prepped. We're talking about total knee replacement, and yep. those those general principles are for any orthopedic sure. sort of procedure that requires an implant. Now, I would even say a couple other things that in the prep part, we have people that clean the room, people that bring yep. all the instruments and the implants and all that stuff. So there's a whole yep. group well, of people involved. Yeah, that, I know. We have people that build the hospital. Sure. <laughs> okay. If you want to go way back. People that founded this country <laughs> way back. Yeah, that's right. When the earth began. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, too one far. Celled, uh, one celled creatures that came out of the okay, no, too far. Came out of the ocean. All right. Okay. So <laughs> the limb is prepped. So that means you're using some kind of antiseptic prep on it to kill the bacteria in the skin. Right. Because you want to prevent infection. And bacteria that we have, they're not they're not notorious, they're just everywhere. We have yeah. them on bacteria. us right now. So yeah, it's just right to get here. a Skin, we don't want an infection. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Leave a comment if you have no bacteria on your body. Okay, so you prep it and we drape it. Okay. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> you, got, you got me now. Okay, right. here we go. All right, and then we drape the limb. Right. All right, so we put sterile drapes and isolate the part that we're operating on. So when you operate on someone, you're not looking at their whole body. Right. You prepped and draped, so you're really just looking at the area that you're going to be operating. And this picture shows it nicely. Oh yeah, we got a picture. Yeah, I can't see the picture, but our viewers can. All right, just the leg. Okay, all right. So that's the prep. Yep. And then the surgical approach. So if we're talking about a knee, yeah. Why don't you take us through your surgical approach to the knee? Yeah. So generally speaking, I would make a anterior midline incision. So it's in the front. It's right down the middle. Sometimes, if someone has had a recent or significant incision in the past. If you can incorporate it safely, so that you still can do the operation, you can use the old scar. Mm -hmm. but, but don't get mad, if your surgeon chooses to make a second scar, it's because they want proper access to your knee to do the operation correctly. Yes. It's a little bit about the cosmetic stuff, but mostly about getting it to the knee properly. Yeah. And the whole goal of the surgical approach is to expose the knee appropriately so that we can go on to the next step. Right, so we cut through the skin and the fat, and then that brings us down onto the front part of the kneecap that's covered by some other soft tissue, and then the patellar tendon and the quadriceps tendon that connect it to the rest of the body. So now we're on top of the knee. In order to get into the knee, we do what's called an arthrotomy. And most people would use what's called a median parapatellar arthrotomy. So you cut up along the edge of the patellar tendon, around the kneecap, and then you, you split a little bit of the quadriceps tendon, so you have tendon on both sides. And yeah. this allows us to flip over the kneecap and look inside the knee. Pre uh, uh, medial prepatellar incision, yep. arthrotomy, and you've averted the patella. So now yes. the patella is the, the joint side or the articular side is normally looking at the knee. We flip it, so now it's looking up at the ceiling and push it out of the way. And now you can see the end of the femur and the upper part of the tibia, which is where all the work happens. Okay, and that's the approach. Okay. okay? And now the bone preparation. You've got to prepare the bone to receive the implants. Okay. Okay. You can't just put the implants right on the bone as they are. And this requires bone cuts. Right. All right. Be before I get there, though, mm. I'd remove a couple other things. Okay. So mm. I would I would remove the ACL for sure. Yeah. 
Some people remove the PCL, it depends. Right. Most studies say that they're all about the same. They don't get too fussed about that. Right. We remove the medial and lateral meniscus, which right. invariably, if you have medial compartment arthritis, the medial meniscus is torn right. and quite damaged. So we True. remove both of those. Now we're to the bone cuts, sir. Right. So yeah, those are uh, part of the approach. From personally, for me, the medial meniscus I remove after right. some oh, of the bone sorry, cuts, that. but the lateral meniscus I remove before the bone cuts, but it's, there's a bit of variation there for but sure. They're gone. They're gone. And then, so the bone cuts, and you can use, there's various options now to do this. Uh, traditionally, you use like guides that you put in the bone and around the bone yep. to, me to measure your cuts. Or um, you can use uh, navigation, computer navigation, yep. which is what we've been using for a couple of decades 18 now. Years. Um, navigation and then an extension of navigation is a robot assistant. Right. Which we'll talk about in another video. Yep. But in any case, use some kind of help in determining how to make these bone cuts and where to make them to get your angles right. But you cut the bone, you cut off the femur, usually it's about one, two, three, four, five cuts yep. off the femur, plus or minus a box cut in the middle. And really the tibia is just one cut. One flat cut. That's yeah, and, and the angle of these cuts and the position of, of the saw blade is all predetermined. It's not just kind of, you're not just kind of winging really, it. Really. Yeah, it's very, it's very specific and very intentional, but we're kind of skipping over that part. Yeah, because you want the cuts to match the underside of the implant that you're going to be putting on. And you also probably want to make the leg straight, although with the yeah. advent of kinematic knees, maybe not. But yeah, more yes. or less. You're more or less, you're changing the alignment to a certain degree of the, of the leg. Right. And so the next step would be, now you've got your cuts, now you can use what are called trial components. Right, so now we've done our, we've done our prep, we've done our approach, we've done our bone cuts, now we're talking about implantation. Right. And we don't just go ahead and slap the implants in, we trial different ones just like you try different shoes on. Right. And we have different sizes, so go ahead. And right, so we trial different sizes of both the femur and the femoral and the tibial components, and then there's a plastic spacer. So essentially what a knee replacement is, is a metal femur, a metal tibia, with a piece of plastic in between. And then once you've committed to the femur and the tibia, the really the only adjustable part is the thickness of the plastic insert. And when we use trials, we test different thicknesses to make sure it's kind of like Goldilocks, kind of not too tight and not too loose. You want it kind of just right so that your leg can get all the way straight mm -hmm. and that it can get bent within the reasonable goal. Okay, and then once you've done your trials and you determine the right sizes, then the circulating nurse will bring those sizes in, pack, in sterile packages. You'll read the package, make sure you have the right size, open those packages, and then implant those actual Wait, worms. so you didn't pick my size before I got there? We do, I actually do template before. Yeah. Most of us do template before we get a ballpark idea. But how do you know what to, how do you know what to have in the room? We, we have, in the back room, we have many, many, many sizes. You have all the sizes. All the sizes. Got it. More than shoes. Makes more sense to people. Um, and then once you've got, once you've determined the right size from your trials and your preoperative templating, then you, actually that's something we could have included too as a preoperative templating. Sure. And then you fix these implants to the bone. They can be cemented. Or uncemented. Or uncemented. Right. Okay. So you hammer them in. Yeah. So now you've already picked your sizes, you've opened them, you've implanted them into the patient. You're happy that the knee moves well, that the kneecap tracks well. Yeah. Happy. Now you go on to closure. We need closure. <laughs> we need closure. All right. Yeah. And that is where you go in reverse order of, yeah. how, of your approach. Right. So closure is the approach in the mirror. Basically. Okay, so you sew the arthrotomy shut so that the quad tendon gets sewn back to itself. But you don't put back the menisci. No, you it, do not put ACL that back in. Like that. Yeah, you close it around the kneecap right down to the patellar tendon. And then, so now your knee is closed. And then now you close the soft tissue, so the soft tissue is underneath the skin, so some of the fat and connective tissue, and then you close the skin, sometimes with a running suture, sometimes with stable, sometimes with glue, there's a lot of different options. They all work well, Yeah. and then you're done. Cover it with a dressing. That's it. Now you may hear different variations, oh this surgeon does it this way, this surgeon does it. The variations in total knee replacement are in the approach. Right. Okay. It's, it's amazing. There's so many different companies that make total knee replacements and they all look almost exactly the same. Metal femur, plastic liner, and metal tibia. Yeah. But and it hasn't changed really no. at all. Uh, there's been some subtle changes over the years. But I mean that part of the principle, yeah, the metal on plastic on metal hasn't changed. That's the way total knee has been yeah. since wow. its invention. So now you know. Um, we thought it was important to share this with yeah. people. If you're going into a big operation like this, you want to be educated. Um, if you like this video, please like it. Share your experience, leave a comment if you're having yeah. a total knee, if you knew this, didn't know this, whatever. Yeah, and now if you ask one of us, 
we're just going to say, oh, watch the video. Watch the video. <laughs> no, we'll explain this still too, but yeah. we'll say you can also watch the video. All right? Okay. Remember, you are in charge of your own house. We'll see you next time in the operating room.